All right, guys, so everybody's into like carry handle uppers and stuff, and I don't know how I feel about it, except for the fact that I'm no better than anybody else, and it's pretty cool. So let's shoot the thing a little bit. We're gonna start off with a VTAC drill and see how bad it goes. I have a lot of height over bore here. And as you can see, when you paint up someone's rifle for them and then you do a V-check drill, it sort of defeats the purpose of the paint. But it sure does make it look cool. Hey guys, welcome back to Triple F Shooting. Today we're looking at something that quite a few other people are already doing, but I can't help myself and had to get in on it because it is actually pretty cool. That would be a retro style AR with the carry handle and everything. If you guys have been watching our other videos, you know this isn't anything new for us. We have the XM16E1, we have the 177E2. Uh, we like the retro stuff. I like the older guns especially. And as you get more modern, it's still cool to take things that are kind of the early developments or the mid stages of different rifles that we have today. So with all that being said, what we're looking at is a Rock River, and I believe it is a CAR A2 LAR-15. There's, it's quite a bit of nomenclature. I'll put that up there for you. But very interesting that a company is still putting out a complete rifle in an A2 carry handle style fashion. Um, this is something that a lot of people are chasing right now for one reason or another. Let me get my handy ammo box out the way. Go ahead and do all the nothing in the gun stuff. But this is something that everybody seems to be interested in right now. Um, and I get it. It's pretty cool if you've watched Black Hawk Down or anything of that time period. This is going to, you know, you can obviously see where the inspiration came from. When dealing with a rifle like this, normally you have to source a bunch of different parts. It's difficult to get a hold of a receiver that is still carry handle and everything else. I believe that's going to get better, or at least easier, depending upon your version of things. It's going to get easier in the future because it seems like there's a great resurgence for all this retro stuff, and a few companies are kind of starting to step up and offer those things in different um styles uh, according to the era that they're shooting for so right now there's obviously a lot of the brownells um, rifles and kits floating around out there but those i believe they quit making them two three years ago so are very expensive and hard to get your hands on there's companies like retro rifles and tnte and stuff like that but they seem to be having a really hard time keeping up with demand um almost every time you get on those websites everything's out of stock so while looking around on gun brokers i often do stumbled upon this rock river a2 carbine uh, they also have a mid-length if that's more your thing uh, but comes as a complete rifle and is available for somewhere around 900 dollars that's fairly inexpensive considering a lot of these companies that are offering, you know, retro style uppers, they want somewhere between seven and eight hundred to, you know, a thousand dollars just for an upper, let alone the whole gun. Uh, that being said, this thing does not come for nine hundred dollars in this exact configuration. I have done things to this and we'll go over that um, as we get into the video. 
But first and foremost, this thing shoots. It shoots really well. I was very surprised for $900 just how well this shoots. And we'll throw in a couple clips just to give you an idea. Um, not going to look a whole lot different than most of the other AR stuff out there, but when you're talking jumping back about 30 years tech, it does a pretty good job. That's quick. Okay, two in the chest. Five, three. Working just fine with steel. Nine seconds. That wasn't great. Interesting reload out of this thing. That felt better. <laughs> okay, so what about this makes it fun? Why do people go after things like this? Um, nostalgia, I think, is most of it, and it's funny because you can apparently experience nostalgia for things you never experienced in the first place. Uh, most of that's coming through movies and video games. But this thing gives you a feel different from, you know, your standard pick rail, flat top AR receiver. You can obviously put on an A2 style carry handle and go to town and that is a much cheaper way to do it and it's not requiring a dedicated rifle. But this has a look to it that is difficult to replicate without just going full bore. Um, so. I mentioned earlier we, done a, we had done a couple things to this rifle. Obviously it's been painted um, and that paint job obviously is inspired by the whole Black Hawk Down thing. We went with a little bit darker colors just for more of a woodland pattern rather than the deserty kind of theme but still has the tan and OD green. The brown is just a little bit darker. I might throw some black on there just to make it match up to kind of M81 but I'm not seeing a lot of space to do that. Um, and I don't want it to look cluttered, so I actually really like it right now. I think it's going to stay this way. But other than the paint job, which is the clearest thing that's been changed, Rock River still sells their equipment with commercial buffer tubes. Now, that's not really that big a deal, but when you get this Rock River at first, it's going to come with a standard kind of M4-ish looking stock. Um, but it's on a commercial tube, meaning this wedge down here is quite a bit wider than what you'd see on mil spec. So when you are trying to get your cool guy CAR-15 going and you want to put this CAR-15 style stock on there, you can't just do that. You have to change the stinking buffer tube. So that happened, um, not an enormous deal and not terribly expensive, but it was a little bit obnoxious to get, you know, a new rifle um, off the shelf and have a commercial buffer tube in it. Some companies still do that. I'm not sure why. I don't know why everyone doesn't just go mil spec. That seems to be much simpler. Anyway, the only other thing that I changed on this rifle was the A2 grip. And I changed that because Rock River has kind of an enhanced, you won't be able to tell from here, but this is a rubber coated A2 grip. So think of if you took one of the Hogue grips and just made it look like an A2 style. It's very tactile, kind of sticky feeling. Uh, definitely better than a standard A2 but I was worried about painting the rubber and what that might do to it or how that would look. So now I have this rubberized A2 grip floating around. Neato. 
But that's all I had to change. So essentially for very little money and effort, you can have a very A2 Car 15 style rifle um, rather than spending, you know, $1,500 to $2,000 or if you just buy it straight out from someone like Type A Firearms, uh, $2,500. But they're doing it as close to correct as they can. Now, with that retro style, you can tell the optic is mounted very high up. We'll do some more shooting, um, and I'll kind of explain some of the differences when dealing with an optic that tall off the rifle. Oh, I like that. <clears throat> so, with the head up kind of feeling of having this optic mounted so high, I do notice I can get to the sight a whole lot faster. I have this great big tube to look through too, but like right now I'm on the dot. So my chin is barely, basically a jawline kind of weld on the stock there and the dots just dead lined up for me. Uh, okay, so one thing you may have noticed or I may have said out loud in the shooting portion of the video is that your head is fairly high up off the gun. Um, get my caps out the way. But essentially, I'm on center line right now, and you can tell that I'm only really running a kind of jawline chin against the stock. Uh, it doesn't really change a ton for you. It seems faster. Uh, faster really probably isn't the word. I don't think the you know your sights reaching your eyes. I don't think that's happening quicker than if I were to shoulder, you know, a common, you know, my go-to AR that has standard height sights. Like, there's not a whole lot of difference between here and here, especially if you are practiced and the gun just kind of comes up into the correct shoulder pocket. That being said, you can still use your iron sights. So right now I'm on my irons and I have a, you know, fairly standard cheek weld. And now I'm on my dot and I'm up on my chin. So you can really use either. If you have a dot and it's working, I don't know why you would go down to your irons and look through that tube that this weaver mount creates because it does kind of add thickness to the sidewalls of the carry handle and tunnels it down even tighter. Not great, you know, backup only kind of deal. But anyway, it's not necessarily faster, but what it does do for you is allow you to have more of a head up position. It's slightly more comfortable just for natural body mechanics, uh, and that can lead to feeling a little bit faster. You have a little bit more awareness of everything around you. Uh, for both eyes open shooting, it's very nice and comfy. I'm not digging down into the gun and kind of muggle, muddling up my sight lines with everything. I'm just looking straight forward in a nice, comfy, upright position, and that does feel a little bit better. What it does also do for you is creates... Uh, because I don't have a solid cheek weld, this gun does not recoil by any major stretch. Uh, it's a 5.56 five, and it's fairly soft shooting even in this carbine format. So that's not a huge issue, but if you are in an odd position or something where you may not have the best of recoil management, when only your chin is on the rifle and the gun goes off, this red dot is gonna move around a little bit more um, in relation to your eye than if you are locked down to the gun nice and solid with your cheek. So follow-up shots may not be as quick when you're in odd positions. Otherwise, it's not really changing much at all. Um, we also can talk about height over bore. Uh, height over bore is definitely an issue. Like I'll back up to about 10 yards and put a round. I'm gonna aim right at the A and see where this round lands. So let's go back here real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna sling one right at the A, but because I'm at 10 yards and I have such a difference between where my barrel line is and my optic, you're probably gonna see this round hit fairly low. So just to demonstrate what this extreme kind of head up will do at close distance. Here we go, right at the A. And it pretty much hit right on the B. So we can go up and look real quick. So point of aim, point of impact. So you can see we're a solid like two and a half inches different. Definitely something to keep in mind 
if you are going to run an optic this high on the gun. Now, in a real life scenario, that's still gonna suck like a lot. So I wouldn't get that crazy over it, but if you're trying to hit, you know, your thumbnail at close distances, you do have to be aware of height over bore, and that's nothing new. This is just very high over the bore compared to, you know, like a modern pick rail style upper receiver, but very cool. So height over bore is an issue if you are trying to hit like your thumbnail at 10 yards and you do need to work on your hold. If you are in a true, you know, defensive situation, and again, I am not uh, law enforcement, military, anything other than just some guy that likes to go to the range and shoot stuff, so my word means zilch. But I imagine that if someone were to break in or something of that nature and violence has to be used, that this distance is not going to create a huge change if I put that round, you know, on center line target. Getting hit here or here is going to be an extremely bad day no matter what. So, yeah, better to hit here than in the upper lip, but I'm not sure how well I'm going to be handling everything under that kind of stress. And if the round goes anywhere near where I'm trying to put it, great. I have never been in that situation, hope I never have to be, but not sure I would trust myself to hit, you know, a pinky nail with perfect holdovers and everything else if I'm in a violent altercation. So, that being said, getting on the site and putting it where it looks like it needs to be and pulling the trigger and being this much lower, I don't think is going to be an enormous issue unless you're dealing with like a hostage situation, and then it is. Again, I don't think I'm going to be doing anything like that, so is what it is. All right, so let's do a quick muzzle to stock on this thing and just talk about the features that come specific to this Rock River uh, other than the stuff that I've changed. So right off the bat, you can get this in a one and seven or one and nine twist. This one is in a one and nine. Uh, all that's really getting put through this thing is 55 grain, so works great for that. You can go up to 62 with a nine inch or a one and nine twist, but not any heavier than that. They do put a barrel marking right on top that says it's chrome lined and has been inspected and shows your twist rate. Comes with a standard A2 flash hider. Uh, if you're truly going for like a Gordon carbine or a Black Hawk Down kind of thing, this barrel is probably a smidge heavy. Uh, you could either go with like an M4 profile or a pencil barrel and be totally fine. The cool thing is if you're trying to emulate that era, it was pretty much all over the place on what they could use and what they had. There were A1 style uppers, or I should say um, like C7 style uppers where you have an A1 sight but you have your brass deflector. Uh, there were A2s, different barrel profiles, so you can kind of go hog wild and you'll still be somewhere close. Um, I am not shooting for a perfect clone, so that's not something I need to worry about. You have a standard gas bike with block with your bayonet lug. You do have a seven hole handguard and they are the narrower, uh, small and kind of hard plastic style of handguard rather than your big beefy double shielded, you know, M4 guards. Delta ring, which you should have, everything should have by this point. This rifle, um, other than barrel, fits into like a late 80s, early 90s kind of aspect. Again, you have your A2 upper receiver with brass deflector uh, and then this controversial A2 sighting arrangement. Uh, I've not messed with this thing out to 300 to 800 yards yet and probably won't very much considering what it is, but you can sight adjust for all of that on this turret. <clears throat> Standard T-handle uh, charging handle, nothing extended or crazy, uh, fits the bill for the look. The lower receiver is your standard fare, basic lower receiver as you'd ever see. It is not ambidextrous. Again, you come with an A2 style grip. I just replaced it for a hard plastic rather than a the rubberized that came with it. It does come with this more modern uh, polymer Magpul-esque magazine with an anti-tilt follower. So that's the one that's gonna come with the gun, or at least the one that came with this gun. And then moving on back, you have 
pretty much everything else typical Ford Assist. Castle Nut, again, originally comes with a commercial sized buffer tube. So if that's something that's going to bother you, just keep in mind you're going to have to change that. Whatever. Oh, um, the trigger is a point of like absolute awesomeness with this rifle. I cannot believe how nice this trigger is for the price point and it just being a standard GI trigger. I think Rock Island, or, I'm sorry, Rock River does some things to enhance, uh, I'm guessing they're polishing things or something like that, but we're talking, I'm guessing, I don't know. It's like maybe five pounds, a uh, very crisp break and very quick. Um, there's no chunk to it, it's not heavy. And there's a couple times where we ripped off just fairly quick splits with a standard kind of, you know, mil spec enhanced trigger. Oh God. <laughs> Just had to make like a reoccurrence with the Tesis 1911 because these two items probably would have been seen together in an actual combat zone. So, you know, that holster is so high though. And then to get it out, it's a pull tab. So, not the easiest thing to draw from. I don't have a round in the gun, but I'm gonna do that again. So I am empty, I have to pull down. Draw, safety. The T6 still shoots good too. Anywho, moving back to the stock. The stock that I put on this thing to match the kind of CAR-15 look is the Brownells CAR-15 polymer stock. They're about 50 bucks. No big deal there. Um, at this point, the polymer is totally fine. You wouldn't need to go with a metal because that was kind of, as far as I remember, only Vietnam era carbines had the metal stock. Um, as far as tube position, I think it was kind of all over the place too. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure at this point we've got four positions available. I think the one that comes on this is just a standard six. Oh. This one's actually an aero precision tube. I should be looking at this. Yeah, it's just a six position tube that comes with it. Uh, that's one thing I have no idea how period correct that would be or not. But again, something I'm not terribly worried about. But that pretty much covers the rifle itself. It is a very standard AR-15, A2 style carbine. Um, there's really nothing crazy about it. It has an excellent trigger, and it's just kind of in a retro format. Uh, the optic that's on there right now is a primary arms. I believe it's an SLX, but everything on there is SLX. So it's the SLX 30 millimeter tube. They run fairly inexpensive without a mount. And then this is just a Vortex low mount because you do have to get as low as you possibly can on that rail to maintain any sort of... Uh, chin weld or face touching the gun. If you went with anything taller than this, you're going to be riding around up here. And then even with low recoil, you're really going to notice that every shot you break, your head's going to move in a different direction than the rifle and follow-up shots are going to take longer. But no other real cons to it. Just got to make sure you're going with a low mount. You're a little bit limited on optics that are going to look the part um, this one looks it's basically like an aim point ripoff as far as I can tell so it looks close to what it should and it sits low like it should so this works out really well and it's not terribly expensive so I don't have to go crazy and spend a ton more money than already done on the rifle but again rifles around 900 bucks that is quite a bit less expensive than you can put together an A2 style carbine from a lot of the different manufacturers that generally don't have that stuff in stock anyway but one thing of note um wearing an lbv 88 to kind of go along with the time period uh was actually super fun to run this old rig uh it's actually really comfortable it's something i would not mind wearing just out hiking around the property or something like that messing around uh puts the mags 
in your armpits and stuff. We talk about it on the range. All right, guys, so the rifle's really cool, but you need like period correct-ish stuff to wear with it. So this is an LBV, I'm gonna throw in the name here. I think it's 88, potentially. But essentially, this is an enhanced version of Alice gear. So you can see I can still put on my Alice pouch. I don't have any mags in this right now, but this would carry three and a couple grenades. And then I can carry three mags on either side of me. I've already used one, but they have these quick pull closures with a button and Velcro. And I can get the mag out from basically my armpit. Ugh. And a couple things that lets me do is again, I'm very flat on the front, so I don't have to like lay on a stack of magazines, which is always nice. And then I can also still access, even if I'm in the prone, kind of coming up off my, you know, right beside of my armpit to get these mags rather than having to like dig something off of my stomach. Um, otherwise, it is just hooked up to a regular Alice belt. Uh, this is more of the late 80s version with the big plastic buckle but still a very similar gun belt that you would have seen in Vietnam. This one's a nylon, it's a little bit stiffer. Uh, and then I'm gonna pirouette for you here. The cool thing is now I can carry more stuff on my belt because I have mags up here on my chest instead of having to have all my mags on my belt and then all my other stuff down on my hips. I can kind of spread the load out a little bit. Um, Oddly enough, you don't really see this rig run in movies or anything like that. I don't think it lasted very long in our military. This is kind of us coming out of Alice, and very quickly after this, we went into Molly-type gear that you see all the um, desert camo with a little bit of the woodland fatigue mixed. So just kind of give you a quick rundown on the gear that feels right running this A2-ish kind of precursor to an M4. So, where do we go over that? All right, guys, uh, I guess last thing before we get off, if anyone even cares, which you probably don't too much, but when painting this, I sort of followed the nine hole reviews uh, methodology minus all the taking out of pins and everything else. I just painted the whole rifle. I didn't take everything down, but the way that is suggested by that channel is to take basically packing paper for like shipping things, just the wide brown sheets and tear it off at odd angles and things like that and lay it up and mask the rifle off and spray it down. Um, did one solid base coat of tan and then came back and did all my green and then finished the very last few strokes with the brown. Uh, as you could see in the video, I'm already starting to lose a little bit on my barrel there because jamming it in and out of a barricade is gonna scratch the thing up. That is to be expected. This is just spray paint and I did not go to great lengths to clean the metal before I put it on there. So it's going to wear as it gets rubbed and touched. I'm already, just from the um, dust cover flipping open at speed, I got a little ding here and here, but I think it's gonna look really cool as it wears out and you get to use it to get that look. So don't go you know, sandpaper in your gun after you paint it, just go use the thing and the paint is going to wear out and it'll give it that look if you're looking for that. As you can tell, the mags fit fairly tightly in this LBV 88, so I'm already scratching paint off the mags that I did, but again, it was fun to paint. I basically feel like I was playing Barbies with, you know, mainly rifles and stuff, but all that being said, thanks for watching Triple F Shooting and we will see you in the next video.